One of the most surprising things from today's hearing on the insurrection was the presence of some senators that I will list off now. Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, James Langford, and Ron Johnson, who either objected to the Electoral College votes or have questioned the results of the election. But here they are, sitting in a hearing, investigating the insurrection, like they have absolutely no idea how such a thing could have ever happened. Today, Senator Johnson spent his allotted time continuing to spread the lie that a few fake Trump supporters incited riots. What? Believe it or not, that may have been a step up for Ron Johnson, because just a week ago, he said of the events on January 6th that they didn't seem like an armed insurrection to him, because he's an expert in that, I suppose. And joining me now is Olivia Troy. She is a top advisor to former Vice President Mike Pence, both for Homeland Security and on the Coronavirus Task Force. Olivia, I was frustrated by today because I am really in a place where I, I can't do the bad faith argu arguments. I can't do, uh, you know, the, the positioning and the politicking um, as if those folks that went to the Capitol on January 6th did not have flags that said Donald Trump's name on them. Uh, it's not confusing um, as to why uh, certain things happened on that day. Why do Republican senators like Ron Johnson and the others I listed continue to think they can place blame on anyone who is not Donald Trump or those folks who support him? Well, it's a classic game of deflection, right, and revisionist history in many cases of trying to, you know, uh, try to revise their participation their direct participation in the big lie and in the events uh, that lead up to what happens on January 6th. And I think it's fundamentally, it's, it's actually dangerous because they're using this as an opportunity for their own sound bites and for their own Trump supporters to perpetuate the same kind of misinformation that they have been going along with from the beginning. And to see Johnson there reading a column and talking about basically conspiracy theories and trying to shift blame. I mean, it, it was just ridiculous uh, grandstanding. It was preposterous. I mean, I, I yelled the TV often, if you can imagine. But today, in particular, I was like, is he serious? You can, we, we, we can't take people seriously who say things that are objectively not true. I mean, we all watched what happened on TV. The people were carrying Trump flags. They were not carrying Trump flags, like, in secret disguise as anti-fascists trying to stop a democratic process. Even the premise doesn't make sense, just, like, to be clear. So I feel like, for me, I have to say that, because then we go down, well, maybe, like, there's something to this Ron Johnson stuff. And I feel like they're still pushing the big lie that the election was stolen. That's really what the, all of this is about. How do you feel... Is the, what, what do you think is the best strategy to push back against that from a security perspective? Because as you said, it is a dangerous lie. It's not just a law, you know, a little white lie um, that you can get over. It's something that's very insidious. Right, and from a security perspective, I say it's dangerous because what it does is it continues to, I would say, radicalize these supporters and it enables them to believe that what they're hearing is truth and that they're participating in a movement uh, as taking a stand for their country, right? And you see this actually with the people who have now been charged and are going to jail when they come forward and say, hey, I was doing it because I was doing it in honor of Trump. I don't really see these people as these Republicans, these elected officials who are grandstanding and saying these kinds of things as any different. Um, than some of these far right movements, to be honest with you, that that lie, like the QAnoners and everything, because fundamentally, you're actually creating dangerous dynamics for the homeland. That is what you're doing. You're feeding your mm. constituents lies, and this is why these people have shown they're unfit to be in elected office, right? I mean, we're gonna we're about to see a conservative, and I say that lightly, uh, conference, right? The CPAC conference, where these people are gonna speak, and that agenda is full of the grandstanding of these people and these speakers. And that is going to be fed to their specific audience. And it'll be carried by one-sided networks and um, it'll be continued on. And this is something that we're gonna have to grapple with. And so I think at the local level and in future elections, it really comes down to 
I would say local communities and kind of taking a stand against this type of misinformation and telling people the truth. And I, you know, I call on other Republicans to take a stand against this because really I think it's Republican voters and Republican populace that needs to hear it from Republicans themselves saying these people are not telling you the truth. I think it has to be uh, top Republicans, and I ha- I think it has to be that clear. I-, I think that, you know, oftentimes, even when they do push back, they sort of, you know, do the Mitch McConnell, I'm, I'm voting to acquit, but I think he did a really bad thing, and really people should look at that in the criminal courts, but I'm not going to, um, you know, vote to convict in the only forum that I have um, to to pass judgment on this behavior. And so part of it feels like every single time Republicans in elected office um, pretend they didn't see the Trump tweet, pretend they didn't see the comments, um, you know, they get away with sort of, you know, letting it get worse and worse and worse. So, you know, where do we go from here if you don't have, a, you know, even responsible moderate Republicans speaking out, I mean, other than a few handful of them? You know, I think um, it's accountability and reminding. That's why I say it's going to come down to changing uh, the future. I mean, change, taking a position change in the upcoming elections as these people run again for office and reminding them exactly and reminding the voters and their, their constituents of what these people have done, what it leads to, why it's dangerous, what they did, the fact that people lost their life on January 6th, right? People got hurt. Um, the congressional leadership was there. Uh, Mike Pence was present. I would say one of their own Republicans, right? Uh, an establishment Republican was there present. And all of this leads to these types of events. And this is fundamentally the enabling of these types of movements, not just overnight, but in the you know previous weeks and months leading up to this, where they take this election narrative and they run with it. And they incite it. They incite this type of behavior because people think that they were wronged. Absolutely. In terms of the the idea of transparency and trying to create transparency, even when the news is bad, I mean, you were on the coronavirus task force in an administration that very much had a casual relationship with the truth. And we're not being straightforward with the American people about the severity of the virus and the precautions that we all could take to protect ourselves and our family members. Um, And, you know, that has had real deadly consequences. So in terms of where this administration can sort of sort of step in um, and try to, you know, be transparent with the American people, even when the news is bad. In your view, what's the best way to do that? What are some of the things that, you know, when you were in those meetings with the COVID task force, you decided uh, or you were, you know, thinking through, we need to be telling people these kinds of things. What kind of things um, are you looking to hear from the Biden folks Um, you know, in order to maintain this transparency and trust that needs to be established between the American people and the president? I think honesty is key, even when you don't have all the answers. And it's okay to say, I think we don't know yet, right? There were, you know, at the beginning, there were a lot of unknowns about the virus. And what I had hoped was that responsible people would come forward and say, you know, we don't have all the answers yet, but this is, you know, right now, evaluating the science and the data, This is where we are. This is why we think you should be wearing a mask. This is why we do certain things, even if it means that you change the guidance later. And so I think uh, what the Biden administration is doing uh, well right now, I think, is allowing the medical experts and having these daily these briefings right with the CDC, the head of the CDC and allowing the actual experts who are in this pandemic response to talk directly to the public and take questions for the media in a manner that's open and transparent. And I think, you know, uh, unfortunately, I think that they have uh, an increasingly, you know, they have a double challenge because there's a history, like you said, of a lack of transparency mm-hmm. and spin on information and facts when it comes to this pandemic, right? And so now uh, Americans are sitting there wondering, well, okay, yesterday you said this, why are you saying that it changed or why are they saying this, you know, a week later? And I think that that is, I think, partially legacy of what happened under the Trump administration, where people lost, they lost the trust, right, of, of the people um, and faith and, and their beliefs. And that, that, you know, that was something that was actually discussed early on in task force meetings, mm. was how the, it was critical 
to keep the trust of the people and faith um, in the messaging. And obviously that completely gets derailed along the way. And so I think the briefings that they're doing are important. I think uh, having Dr. Fauci out on the networks, being able to speak freely for once is, is great to see. And, you know, and explaining that science will evolve, data will evolve, and so will the recommendations, but at least telling people right. what they're seeing today. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like, you know, no, no administration uh, is, is going to be perfect and never make a mistake. Um, but I think, you know, owning up to it, if, if some of the data changes, um, the recommendation, just being honest about the science, um, but most importantly, sticking to the science. I think that was also uh, one of the points of contention during the previous administration for which you worked. Um, but you left and you, um, you know, were a whistleblower of sorts in the sense that you were telling us um, the truth about what was going on, and we are grateful uh, for you taking the time. Olivia Choi, thank you so much for being here tonight. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.